everyone. This is uh, Saurabh from the Cisco TAC team. I am here to discuss the local storage options for the caster node in the C4200 chassis. Now each caster node will have its own RAID controller or it will have a path through JBOD uh, connection so that it can control the uh, physical drives installed in uh, each of the or I would say physical drives which are controlled by each of the caster node. Now uh, I'm, I'm here to talk about the storage kit in itself. Uh, the PID would be UCSC RAID C125 hyphen kit. Uh, the kit contains the RAID controller, uh, the RAID controller PID, uh, I mean it is a SAS 94608i controller which has an inbuilt 2GB cache module. The kit also contains a SAS cable and a super cap cable uh, which comes in as a bundle when you first order it. This can uh, control the uh, or I would say the first six uh, front loading SAS or zero drives in the chassis. Uh, the chassis in itself has uh, uh, slots for four caster nodes which will each control six uh, front loading drives. The RAID levels supported are 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50 and 60. Uh, this is uh, what we talked about for, for the RAID part. Uh, you, you can also see that I have shown you uh, where exactly will the controller sit. The controller is placed in uh, horizontally on the first riser board. Uh, the green section here shows you the riser one on which the RAID controller will be installed. If you look at the below picture, you will notice that uh, number one is highlighted as the PCI card socket for the RAID controller card. Uh, in the later part of the video, I am also going, you to, uh, going to show you uh, the actual RAID controller and how it fits in in this PCI card socket. The second part of this sections, uh, section highlights the slimline connector for the SATA JBOT cable. Now uh, considering uh, RAID controller needs a card to fit in in the socket, the JBOT connection is simply uh, through a SATA JBOT cable which will be UCSC SATA C125. It connects to the slimline connector on the PCI riser one and the other end goes to the board controller. Uh, if you notice, uh, those connections have also been highlighted uh, on the left section of uh, what details the server. You just have to mind that uh, in a scenario where you have to remove the caster node from the chassis, it should be first powered off in order to uh, rule out any issues which may uh, lead to uh, data corruption uh, happening due to the super cap uh, cache data being discarded. Uh, the later part of this video will actually show you as to how you can remove the RAID controller and how is the connection going through to the actual RAID controller. Where uh, or how to remove the RAID controller, those two screws have to be unscrewed. This is the complete riser which I have just removed. Uh, this is the cable which uh, this is the uh, RAID cable which RAID card cable which connects on the motherboard. This is the SAS or the SATA cable which will have actual connections to the drives. Now I'm going to remove the uh, card itself. This card is now completely removed from the riser. Uh, this is the actual PID SAS 99640. Uh, this is the cable uh, which will connect to the board and the front panel which connects to the drives. This is the actual riser. It has two connections, one for the RAID controller and the other for the slimline connector for JBOT connectivity. Uh, the cable will directly plug into, uh, this is uh, the cable which I discussed in the later part of the video which will directly connect on the PCI riser and the other part will connect towards the board so that the drives are directly connected. This does not need any controller. Uh, 